Happy New Year. I hope you had a great time. You enjoyed yourself. You were safe. You deserve it. I wanted to start off this new year reflecting, talking about a story that I have not mentioned in quite some time, Attack on Titan. It has been about a year and a half since the final chapter of the story released. And while there's been a lot of stuff when it comes to the anime and uh, some fan chapters, etc, etc, I have not touched any of it. I believe the last video I ever done was for that chapter. And there's a good reason for it. I feel bad for Attack on Titan. I feel sorry for it because for a manga to have such a legacy for so many years, one of the most successful stories to exist, one of the most popular monthly manga to exist, has kind of been left in a limbo state. And for the past year and a half, there's been this war going on, to put lightly. Uh, it was much worse, obviously, towards the end of the story, but over time, it still lingers. Flickers of the flame still there within the community. The ending of Attack on Titan's manga was destructive. It was community breaking, so much so that to this day, you you can't even really have a conversation about Attack on Titan in any positive or negative way because of how the opposite side or the community is going to react. You may have some incredible constructive criticism that's going to be met with hatred for people supporting it and of course vice versa. You love this story, you praise it and someone's going to try and belittle you or bring you down. This might sound pretty standard for any community but for myself this is the first time I've seen it so deep rooted, so everlasting, so much so that it has trickled back to the creator, where he feels bad about the ending that he created, where he apologized for it recently. I don't think any author should have to apologize for the story that they write, for the vision that they crafted, or whatever ending that they decide to do, because it's their story. And while they are writing it for a community, for the fans that absolutely love and adore it, they're also writing it for themselves. I think you start to lose yourself as an author if you write the story how you think the fans would want to see it. You're no longer writing it, your fans are. And that viral toxicity shrouded anything that Isayama had done. I think he definitely took it very heavily and why he apologized to begin with, but it was met with support. It was met with understanding. And I think that was the best outcome for it. I think one of the weirdest things about Attack on Titan, about its manga, about its community, is that if you were indulging within it, if you were reading it every single month, you probably had some of the best times imaginable. All the theories, all the discussions, all the conversations that you could have about Eren, about the war, about the politics, about all of these beautiful uh, characters and their growth and how they're changing and evolving and it was a splendid time. But those final chapters uprooted such a negative overhaul for the story where you can't talk about any of those things now as easily. You still definitely can, obviously within the comfort of yourself and friends, community, whatever it may be. But as soon as it starts to leave your community, and it very often does, you'll see it. It all comes crashing down on you. I'm sure you've most likely experienced it if you're on Twitter maybe you make videos, maybe you just talked about it normally, someone's going to bring up how bad Eren is or how horrible that final handful of chapters were or this or that. And it can be vice versa as well. You may try to bring up genuine criticism, genuine complaints that are well constructed and thought about, yet people don't want to hear it. This level of conflict has also affected myself, except a little bit differently. When it comes to creating content, when it comes to talking about stories and manga and literature in general, there's a level of exposure that I have towards a story that's going to be mostly different to a lot of general readers. You may read a story once, you may read a chapter once and be done with it, just move on or just wait for the next chapter. For myself, the amount of times that I have gone through Attack on Titan or gone through chapters or uh, anything relating to characters all boils down to research and just going through the motion of exploring the story from different angles, finding new things, trying to understand it as best as possible, doing a real deep dive on the literature exposes me to the story a whole lot more. However, that does not mean that what I say or how I feel about the story or what I think is right or wrong or true or false is accurate. If anything, it is just another perspective, a different perspective. And that's something that I've always valued for creating videos and even just myself enjoying videos is that I love hearing people's perspective and I'm very open to interpretation. I'm very open to perspective. I want to hear other people's opinions and ideas. And with that, you can either merge it with your own own or completely get rid of your own idea and kind of look at theirs. That's always the beauty of it. So every time I talked about a story, every time I talked about Attack on Titan, that was the mindset I went in with. And while I do recognize that I can speak in a way that seems very confident or know-it-all or showy or just really pretentious in ways, I can agree. I've always pushed for wanting more and learning more because it's endless. How I view Eren as a character, how I view Attack on Titan as a story is fine, but I want to learn more from other people. 
I want to see other people's opinions, other people's ideas. That is the most valuable thing to myself because of all of the exposure that I've had towards Attack on Titan, because of the community that I built surrounding the release of those chapters. Every time I'd make a video about them, every time I would make theories or talk about characters, there'd be a healthy amount of you coming there and discussing your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree and giving your own opinion on the situation. And I appreciate that. I value it wholeheartedly and it made talking about Attack on Titan one of the funnest experiences I've ever had. When the finale rolled through, however, that vanished. It disappeared. It completely shattered and smashed all along the floor until this day, a year and a half later, I still have no urge or no want to talk about it. And it's specifically because I know that anything I say, even this video, is going to trigger people's flight or fight response. They either want to defend Attack on Titan or they want to belittle people that enjoy it. There's rarely any in between. And if you frequently make videos on that, you amalgamate that sort of community. I like to believe that the people that watched my videos on Attack on Titan were very open, that enjoyed them for the discussion that it brought. Even though it might have been pretentious, they still enjoyed a different perspective and they didn't have to agree with it. If I haven't explained it clearly, hopefully that opens it up a little bit more. That all the time that I've put into Attack on Titan, that the turbulent nature of the finale of the story and mixing those two things together really spurs no type of urgency to talk about it. And it's weird as a creator, as someone that makes videos, because this is all we do. We want to be excited to talk about these stories. We want to share opinions and theories and all of these different ideas and to round up a community of like-minded individuals that enjoy it, that can have a conversation, that can bring your ideas forward. I'm not going to speak for every creator, but that was my goal and I accomplished it. The reaction towards that ending, however, fractured it entirely. You want to know what's really crazy about it? For months after, even a year later, I had people both equally attacking and defending me for just talking about Attack on Titan. People judging who I am as a person, my character, how I view stories. That's fine. They have all the right to do that. Even though they went about it in the most toxic, disgusting way possible, it comes with a trade. I don't expect every single person to like me. I don't expect every person to agree with what I talk about. But I noticed the trend of a lot of other creators getting below lasted just for their thoughts on the story and it was so back and forth it was so all over the place you couldn't like the story you couldn't hate the story you couldn't sit in the middle of the story you would still get blasted there was nothing that you could do as a creator to talk about attack on titan to benefit some sort of positive outcome some sort of genuine community that meant well by you i wouldn't be surprised if this ends up there in light of all of that however there was people that genuinely defended me that defended a lot of other youtubers at the end of the day the thing is I don't care if you hate Attack on Titan. I don't care if you love it. I don't care if you sit in the middle. I don't care if you're indifferent. The killer for me for Attack on Titan story why I never want to talk about it, why I never want to make videos on it and most likely never will is funny enough not because of the story, not because of the ending that I'm indifferent about. Killer was the response, the reaction, lawless war-torn community that had no sense about it whatsoever and still to this day you can't lie like or dislike Eren Jaeger or Attack on Titan publicly without someone conflicting with you in some sort of way. That's how crazy it is. My position is not a unique one. A lot of people will feel it and I've done a, a pretty horrible job to express why this story that has meant so much to me that I've spent what would seemingly be thousands of hours making content on it, reading it, researching it, going through it, it doesn't make me more knowledgeable but it makes it more disappointing that I no longer feel comfortable talking about it. I still respect Respect Attack on Titan. I still remember the beautiful experience that it gave me and I still admire that that story is so incredibly difficult to do. I don't think any other author would be able to pull it off, would be able to make it as consistent, as complex, as nuanced, as emotional as Hajime Isayama has done it. It is a difficult outcome and it was always going to be a difficult outcome just with what the story was talking about. But Attack on Titan for me held on. I think wherever you sit, however you feel, we're all in the same boat. That Attack on Titan's legacy has been tarnished, has been repulsive because of the reaction, the death threats, the turmoil, the disgusting toxicity that's just swelled around it. Maybe in a couple more years that might die down and become normal and people might be able to approach Attack on Titan once again and relive it. But because of the upcoming anime, I think that's just going to stir it up even more. And I guess I could warn all of you now to brace yourself. 
this might just be my final video for it, just to tie it off nicely. A year and a half later, I had some of the best moments of my YouTube journey in creating videos with Attack on Titan, and I couldn't be more grateful. It has offered me a lot, so it feels even more sad to remember it this way, to remember its legacy. Like I said at the beginning, I feel sorry for Attack on Titan. I feel sorry for Hajime Isayama. I hope he's able to forget about the iconic story that he crafted and to just enjoy his day to day. And for you, I hope your journey doesn't end as turbulent, whether you love it, whether you hate it, hopefully you can still find and remember some joy within it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, so please do let me know.